Hello and welcome back. Sean here, Mountains Garage on a blustery Thursday. Believe it or not, some people have missed my weather report or at least the recap of the last 24 hours. I'm the most accurate when we're talking in the past <laughs> as far as predicting weather. We had about a half inch of rain yesterday, 50 degrees, melted a lot of snow, and then overnight, in about an hour, it dropped from 50 to 20. Fortunately, along with that, the rain had stopped for only about an hour, but the wind had picked up so bad the power was flickering off and on, and it managed to dry the roads for the most part so they didn't have to go out and empty the salt barn on the streets again. So they actually got rinsed off and dried one step closer to being able to drive salt free on the roads. So that's exciting. I'm hoping uh, it's gonna get warm again after today. Today's beautiful, sunny, and windy. Twice this morning I've lost my hat. That doesn't happen very often, but it blew it right off my head. <laughs> so yesterday afternoon and this morning, I've been doing some measuring and kind of leads into a funny story while in Florida. Again, in my spare time, I found locally, well, two things happened. One, Facebook Marketplace can be a frustrating place, and so can Facebook, but it can also be interesting. Last week, I saw some pictures of my mother's neighborhood back in 1914. You know, it was a uh, interesting event. Anyway, back to Marketplace, a lot of times the people are frustrating and the products aren't what you hope for, but other times you meet the coolest people and they have some really good stuff and that happened this morning. While I was down in Florida, like I mentioned, I was shopping both locally and in the area of Florida I was in, the Orlando Kissimmee area. Man, I can't live down there because there is way more stuff, way more people, and way more stuff available <laughs> than there is up here. I was looking at race car parts and all kinds of stuff, but anyway, when I use my adjustable length push rod checkers, when you're setting up a valve train and an engine, you need to determine the proper push rod length I have a few options. These are old with the nut. I always end up using them. And the nut is always in the way of the guide plate, so I should just put these away. I have different versions that are smooth and don't interfere with the guide plate. You think I would use these? I always find myself using these, but anyway. When you determine the length of your push rod by where the valve tip operates on the valve stem, you have a length that you need. You need to order these in thousands, so how are you going to measure it? That's pretty big. And <laughs> a tape measure isn't going to cut it. You need to be more accurate. So I have, again, not the greatest brand. This is Amazon or eBay, but it's, you know, it's what, 6 to 12? It's 12 inch total length. It doesn't start at 6. It's 12 inch overall length. Digital. It's accurate enough. This will do the job. It wasn't much money. Uh, I've learned to take the battery out of it while it's just sitting in between measuring push rods. Could be years. Uh, so you don't find the battery dead when you get back. But this will do the job. I've been using it. I technically didn't need anything else, but that really doesn't factor into my day. <laughs> you know, today I woke up, had breakfast, did my normal morning routine, and then went out and gathered some stuff and brought it back. And the area I'm putting it in didn't get any bigger. When this repeats every day, it's insanity. But So, what I found while in Florida, let's get to it, was a set of Mitotoyo, I believe that's how you pronounce it, uh, sidebar, I watch Mr. Pete 222. He has a YouTube channel. He's known as your YouTube shop teacher. And I patiently watched him and I taught myself how to use the mill and how to better use the lathe. And he is, his skill level's way up here. He's been doing it his whole life. He was also a high school teacher, teaching shop and 
everything else. But anyway, he loves quality measuring devices. And he will tell you Starrett uh, is probably the best. Minitoyo is fine. Uh, he doesn't have much to say about brands like this other than it's better than nothing sometimes. So I found in 10 minutes from my house, and this is while I'm in Florida, so I contacted the guy. He had a 6 to 12 Minitoyo interchangeable anvil micrometer set with standards so you can actually check it to make sure it's accurate. Extremely inexpensive, and I wanted it. So I sent a message last weekend. I didn't know exactly, I knew it was the next town over. I didn't know he was as close to the border of my town as he is. And my plan was to get there Monday. Today's Thursday. Life happened in between, and the first thing I did when I got there this morning is apologize for taking four days to get there. I became the frustrating person on Marketplace. Because when I say I'm going to be there, I tried to be there, but things kept happening. I had to meet people, whatever. And he was totally understanding. I'm the one that feels bad. He was fine. And the amazing part is an, I meet another gentleman whose shoes have to be filled eventually. Now, I've mentioned before, I think the entire world is older than I am. So I'm talking to the guy, he spent a lifetime in factories. He was the guy that you know, makes and fixes all the machines to do bread, you know, bag bread, make bread, slice bread, canned beans. I mean, he did all the local factories around here once great. He worked a career as the machine shop guy. He's one of the guys that can fix everything. He has formulas in his head he just by a conversation the man is very intelligent and very smart in his field and frustrated glad he's now retired because the younger generation is not coming along with skills like him i used to work with a gentleman who worked at a cannery down in scarborough maine and what a pleasure it was to know him he was so smart and everything he did was flawless because he spent a lifetime of making things perfect, but he had skills. So I hope another generation comes along that does more than stare at the phone and learn stuff. But anyway, don't want to get sidetracked. Uh, <laughs> that seems like I already did. But my new friend is only 10 minutes from me. I've driven by what is his house for years, 30, 40 years I've driven by this place no idea that that little garage contained an entire machine shop and all kinds of stuff. And hey, I made a new friend today. So while I was there, he had a few other things for sale. Uh, this is a Starrett. This is a micrometer holder. You may have seen me when I was setting up my dial door gauge, which is not a good quality one, but it's better than nothing. I've been using a vise and a rag to hold the mic so I can adjust my dial bar gauge. This is the actual tool for the job. It's a Starrett. When you loosen up this little knob, you can put this any direction you want. Lock it how you like it. Lock the mic into it. These little plastic things. He says they don't make these anymore. It's quite heavy. I was afraid I'd have to clamp it to the bench. I don't think so. This base is a couple pounds anyway. That's not going anywhere. So that was another must-have item. And the last one is something I didn't anticipate having probably ever because I haven't priced them. It wasn't even on my radar other than I have two small ones, but this is a Tapmatic. This one will do up to a three-quarter inch tap, I believe. I think this is number 10 to three-quarter inch tap. Now, most of my tapping needs are half inch and under, but you put this rig in the mill or the drill press, you put this against something, you set the clutch, you put your tap in here, and after you drill the hole, you put this rig in, and you can tap the hole, and it automatically reverses. I assume it senses when the, the going gets easy, and that's how it knows to turn around. I'm excited to try it. Uh, again, I have ones for tiny taps, and I've never even tried them because I don't do a lot of tiny tapping, and if I did, I'd be scared to start off <laughs> with you know, motorized. 
you know, I see people tap live on the lathe and on the drill press. I'm not that brave. This has a rubber collet, so you get a little wiggle, but it's known for making easy work out of tapping holes. So, exciting. I, I wasn't anticipating that little find. Uh, and also making a new friend that was awesome. He had a giant arbor press. That's something I'm still looking for. I want one so I can press in bushes and stuff. I have like a half ton, a number, a 0.5, whatever they call it. They go by numbers, number one, two, three. I need at least a three, if not a four or a five. The bigger, the better. I want something I can push in control arm bushings and obviously pump bushings and transmission bushings. But So that's on the list of I'll just have to happen across it. When I walked in the shop and saw that, and I instantly fell in love with the one he had. He says, well, you should get one that ratchets. It'd be faster. So here he is with, you know, this nice tool, and he's already looking for something better. So anyway, my conversation, I think the entire world's older than I am. I'm two years older than this guy. I look at the world as a kid. I'm a kid, and everybody else is older. Turns out I'm two years older than this gentleman that I met today. So <laughs> that's the way it goes. I will talk more about the actual cylinder head work and measurement and choices I've made. I have more parts coming because I made a different choice for valve springs. And when you make choices, things have to change and it costs money. But in the end, hopefully it was worth it. So that's it for today. I shot a video the other day working on the 377 small block. I got it done, started watching it, didn't like it, and erased it. So I got to try that one again because I'm also working on that in the back room, trying to, you know, knock out a few things on it. And, uh, I mean, I'm down to putting the valve train together and bolting the intake on it. So we're getting there. But, uh, yeah, more on that in the next video. Thanks for watching and, uh, catch you soon.